Okay, another way we teach it is that you might use um, the wrong coordinator, or you might be coordinating ideas that are not equal. This gets a little bit more complex. Let's look at the example. John Stuart Mill was a 19th century utilitarian, and he believed that actions should be judged by their usefulness or by the happiness they cause. Okay, no problem with or. Uh, just that choice and its equal grammar structures. This is particularly difficult for me to figure out here, but native speaker, looking at it, something is wrong here. What is wrong? And I have no idea what. Um, it's not. It's not a problem with with and per se. Um, in terms of meaning, he doesn't mean but or so, or for, he's adding additional information. Well, if it's not a matter of the, the choice of the word within the class, then it's got to be the <coughs> class of words they are using. When, when we analyze language, two choices, that's all we have. You're picking the wrong structure within a class, or you're picking the wrong class. I know it's not the wrong connector. So the ideas aren't equal. That's the only thing I'm left with. OK, the ideas aren't equal. How do I deal with that? I have to ask, what's the relationship with this in this sentence here? John Stuart Mill, this is what he was. This is what he believed. Which one is more important than the other? Um, that's a cultural answer. It's metalinguistic. What we're providing here with this B word is a definition. Okay? This is this. When we have a term in English, and we provide a definition, the definition is subordinate. It's the term that, so um, if, if, we were, if we're defining a, a tree, the tree, comma, uh, a, ma a red maple, comma, okay? We put it in that a positive structure, between the two commas, we provide a definition. How do we define a person culturally? We define a person by cultural standards. Um, who am I? How do I define myself? Um, I am a teacher. Ask my husband, <laughs> for sure. Okay. Um, so, by my occupation, culturally, I'm defined. Can you think of other things, how, how we might define ourselves? What, what defines who we are? Mother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's broaden that. Uh, your ideas. Your, your, your beliefs, um, maybe in some cases, but let's get, let's Personal get. assets. Such as? Such as generous, friendly. Uh, we, no, we normally wouldn't say Diane Whaley, comma, a generous person does this. Well, Sounds, but depending on the yeah. context. We need, we need something bigger. Uh, nationality. 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 Okay, Un unavoidable. Someone once tried to tell me that their nationality didn't affect them and that they would be the same had they been born in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Just <laughs> impossible. Okay. So our nationality um, in, in American culture, um, especially these days in terms of 
political ideologies and things like that. Our religion, or lack of it, is a defining characteristic along with our occupation. Um, we have to be careful when making um, generalizations like that, though, because, as we all know, language changes. Uh, whether we like it or not, uh, we can't be prescriptive now in our grammar. Uh, we also can't be prescriptive in what is a definition of a person. Um, we, we made a conscious effort now not to define ourselves by our gender in the United States. So we have, we have changed our language to reflect that. Um, when I was growing up, we were taught mailman, policeman, yeah. fireman, yeah. Uh, all those man stuff at the end. Postman, Postman mailman, whatever. My daughters grew up postal worker, uh, police officer, and firefighter, and just the name is the name is a server. Server, yes, yes. I, I, I have to work at that. I have to make conscious decisions. Um, my daughters like that. Um, so in terms of definitions, those things change too. So we no longer um, do, my father always used to say, I will never go to a lady doctor, <laughs> you know? And, and we say, no, Dad, you, you can't see that anymore. <laughs> well, I've always said that. <laughs> um, so we try not to define ourselves by gender, um, by sexual preference, and by age, which I've come to appreciate enormously. <laughs> uh, so um, how we define ourselves, cultural. Um, this is, is a, a definition. That's what he was, so integral to him. So um, when, when we revise this, we want to get it into the, the appositive structure. And many times, it's just a matter of telling students um, definitions are subordinate, and then try to recognize what those definitions are by cultural standards within the, the language group that you're talking about. Okay. Um, 